welcome to a new monthly PO box haul. Well, now it has been quite busy this month, as you can see by the large amount of books I have in my PO box. If you want to be featured in my YouTube videos or on my Instagram or my website, please just send me an email with your book blurb and your book cover and your author bio. And if it is a book that I think I might actually like, I will feature it for free, obviously, on my channel. Okay, so I've got a massive stack of books and I'm actually really excited to unpack them. They have been lying here for about two weeks. Um, well, four of them have been lying here for about two weeks because I was just waiting for February to start so I could do this P.O. box haul for Feb. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually really excited to start unpacking this. Uh, I'm gonna start with this one uh, because I think I know which one this is. I'm just gonna put the other ones uh, on the side. Ugh. That is heavy. <laughs> but I'm gonna start with this one. I love the little raven on the front. And I think, I think, and I'm pretty sure, like I'm, I'm like 100% sure, this is a book that I will love. I have seen the Kickstarter campaign for the second book. It looks amazing. I think it is one of the coolest Kickstarter campaigns I have seen so far. Oh, I have, I've shared it on my Facebook. I've, I've like, you know, told people on WhatsApp just because it looks so amazing. And having lived in London myself, because it's a book about London, um, and obviously like most of my friends living in London now as well, it might be really interesting for them as well. Ooh, that's something heavy. Okay. I've got, I've got, ah, uh, I'm having a brain fart because I know what these are called in Dutch. They're, they're called boekeleggers, but I can't remember what they're called in English. I can't remember. Okay, so, but I've got two of those bookleggers. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> there goes my voice. ta -da! How cool is this cover? And if you turn it around, oh, and I have to say, like, it feels very, very soft. It is a sisterhood of the sister. It is a sisterhood of blood, volume one and two. Um, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna read the blurb so you know what it's about. Some say the streets of Victorian London are paved by the hands of sinners. They are. They aren't wrong. For a monster like me lurking in the shadows, it only makes it easier to stain the cobblestones red. Ooh. To the living, immortality may seem like a gift. I'm sorry to say it's not. We aren't without our own enemies. The danger is only greater. Of course, there are some that enjoy this excitement and freedom. I used to be one of them. But as the years pass, many of us desperately cling to our lost humanity and struggle with the bur burdening guilt of the past. I invite you to glimpse at the lives of the vampires that stalk the streets of Victorian London and discover the legend of the Sisterhood of Blood. Uh. I, I literally can't wait to start reading this. Oh my God, this sounds so good. I, I've seen the trailer for this on the Kickstarter and I just got so excited just because it looks absolutely amazing. Um, Kirk just put a lot of work and I, I can only get money in into creating this book and the marketing campaign and I can only applaud that. I wish so many more authors would do that. Oh my god, like I'm I'm just gonna like um play a little bit of the video in here which is like five seconds and I'm gonna link the video in my description and the Kickstarter campaign because you need you need this book and you need to support this Kickstarter campaign just because it is so amazing. They say the streets of London are paved by the hands of sinners. They aren't wrong. It only makes hunting easier for creatures like me to stain the cobblestones red. I invite you to glimpse at the lives of 12 vampires that stalk the streets of Victorian London and discover the legend that is the Sisterhood of Blood. 
wasn't here. I think I know what it is because I've seen it on the Kickstarter campaign and that makes me even more excited. <laughs> Look at that, it's a coin, but it's like one of the coolest coins I've ever seen. Oh my God. Okay, so that was a really great start um, because I am really looking forward to reading that book. So up to the next one, I guess. That's a really big one. <laughs> I'm, I'm so looking forward to you knowing what's in there. All right, it's a big book. Matthew Romeo. Just see that everything is out and I'm not forgetting anything. Looks like science fiction, The Maven Knight. Interesting. It's really nice, really nicely made. Uh, big letters, always good. Made in the US of A on the Middletown in 31st of December, 2018. Nice. Okay, so yeah, I, I love the layout of the book. It's definitely a book, you know when letters of books are too small, like because even the Dickens books my mom has and they're from like, I guess the 60s or 70s. The lettering is so small that even though I really want to read all the Dickens books, I just would never be able to read it from her books because it's just too small and it just puts me off reading. But. Yeah, I really like the layout of this book. So it's, it's really inviting to read. It is um, about 500 pages, like oh, 451 pages. So that's not too bad, especially when you um, consider that the lettering and the spacing is quite good. Uh, but let's get on to the blurb. Secrets have a cost in the world of magic and mystery. Talia. A scavenger from the desert with nothing to his name apart from a relic of the past. Serena, a brewer from the city who becomes a target of an ancient order. When their paths collide, one goal becomes apparent. They must save the world from the chaos of from the from the forces of chaos. A thousand years ago, a thousand years ago, the old world was destroyed by the ending. Legendary maven knights of order were turned into legend. Now, an ancient malevolence seeks to bring destruction to the new world. Drawn into the conflict, the pair must unite with a band of misfits in an effort to stop the growing threats. Marauding outlanders, nanite storms, and countless other dangers await on this quest. But most of all, the mythic powers of the maven knights must be discovered. Two heroes, one journey. This sounds like a bit of a, um, a mix between a young adult one, a young adult book, and the Knights Templar, and I don't know, like Star Wars maybe, <laughs> because if they talk about the desert, not Star Trek, but more like Star Wars than like maybe like solo kind of mix. If you've seen the movie, if you haven't seen Solo, it's I think it's my favorite from the Star Wars universe. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to reading this book. I love the cover. It is very professionally made. And I think the blurb is really like, it's really enticing. It really makes me want to read. Even though like normally I'm, I'm more of a fantasy kind of girl, as you can see by my t-shirt. Um, but, but I have been like easing myself into science fiction so i'm obviously like a star wars fan and i just finished well just um, a few months ago i finished watching star trek voyager with my husband and now we are watching star trek next generation so yeah i've been easing myself into um science fiction um so yeah this is really up my alley at the moment and i'm actually really looking forward to sitting by the pool and just reading this book Okay, next one. That's a big ones. That's a big ones as well. 
I've only been to my PO box twice now and every time I went, like literally my PO box was filled with books. I think those four postmen might be like, oh my God, <laughs> what the hell is happening here? Oh, it's really nicely packed. And there's a, there's a little note to it. I love it when authors um, send me a little note. So, hi Lisa, thank you for reviewing Relics of Andromeda. Um, you may notice some typos. There have already been corrected for the March 2019 launch. So please do your best to ignore them. I hope you enjoy the read. Jonathan. Okay, I'm, I'm really happy when authors warn me about typos. This book hasn't been launched, but I still have it in my hands. So I'm really thankful for Jonathan um, to send it to me so I can have an advanced read. First of all, the cover. It's quite minimalistic, but I do think it works in this case. As you can see, like the blue is very lush. Relics of Andromeda, Song of Ancients. Um, yeah, like, you know, a bit of a bit of space actually does give you that feeling of, the, of like the ancients or like an ancient civilization or um, ancient legends or creating something or like creating the world or the universe or whatever you may believe how it's created. But let's have a look at the blurb. An epic tale spanning civilizations and centuries. Ooh. So the cover is really spot on then. Anka has been told a story since childhood. The alien relics bring ruin and madness. Ancient pieces of technology that seem to have minds of their own, the relics interface with human psychology, granting the power to bend space and time and often inducing psychosis. When the colonists of Andromeda first discovered the relics, long before Anka was born, humanity was plunged into chaos. Ooh, interesting, I like this. Now, Anka is carrying a relic in her pack, tasked with securing the object before it can do any harm. She and her companions set out across the desert by foot, marching towards a distant city, even as the relic begins to whisper in her mind. <sighs> yes, yes, this is definitely a book I would love to read. Um, I think it's really interesting the fact that there are alien ruins I think the whole alien relics on Earth um, is really interesting. It is definitely in line with the current science fiction about, you know, aliens being this, this higher, not higher power, but like this higher species that has been around for way longer than human beings have been and that have technology and, and maybe even like power that outstretches all that is so much greater than human technology. One of the movies that springs to mind is Arrival. I loved that movie and I think the whole setting or, or the way aliens are maybe seen in this book is more or less the same way as they are seen in Arrival. And I, I think that's a, a kind of science fiction I do really like. So I'm really looking forward to reading this book. I will ignore the typos. I know it still has to be, you know, proof it one more time, but I know Jonathan is taking care of it and that everything will be perfect for the launch in March. So I wish Jonathan all the best and, and I'm really looking forward to reading this book. Okay, so what's next? I've got this one. It feels quite thin, which is like, good because I've got quite a, a few thick books I have to read. <laughs> Can't open it. Okay, so there's a little card in it as well. Okay. Oh, it's a homework card! Authors are the best guys, literally. That is why I love being a book blogger because authors are so thankful and they're so amazing. Uh, dear Lisa, thank you for your interest in reading my book. I hope you enjoy it. If you really enjoy it, I hope you will leave a review. Happy readings, cheers. Oh, <laughs> well, thing is I always leave a review even if I don't like it. Um, but obviously for the books I really love, I leave a review on all channels like Goodreads and Amazon. If I don't like it, it's just on my website. So I don't do you harm, but I do warn my readers on my website about books that might not be up to standard. Oh my God, look at this cover. It's amazing. It looks amazing. I love drawings. I love well-drawn covers as well. 
and this is absolutely amazing. I think this might, might be my favorite cover of those four books. So, The Tower of Blue by Eric Losh. Loksh? Lok? Loksh? Loksh? It's weird because in Dutch it is, so here it is C C S H, and in Dutch it is S C H, and then it should be Losh. But I, I have no idea how to pronounce it. So I'm, I'm just gonna call the author Eric. Okay, an epic adventure hard to put down. Interesting. From his entire life, Arnold Blue has been kept sheltered from the world around him. When he accidentally uncovers a terrible secret about his family, he is forced to question the reality of his past. Unable to cope with this revelation, Arnold runs away from home and embarks on a journey to discover the world for himself. Ooh. Along the way, his struggle to coexist with the tower, a 15 foot tall collection of everything he and his family have ever owned, will test his, his resolve, will test his resolve to let go of his bitter past. With a shadow of days gone by, fading with every step, Arnold will have the comfort of his old memories and a way around a better future and decide what, if anything, is worth holding on to. Oh! Oh, that's really interesting, especially like, I think this is like, maybe like the tower. Like, you know, the, the, the tower, um, like his belongings. Ooh, this might actually be like very deep, especially if you if you think that this might be the tower. So you thought, you know, he's he's like literally carrying around everything he owns. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a really nice read. And uh, the, the type that thing in the book is amazing as well. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but like the little dividers are really cute. Yeah, I think this is gonna be an amazing read. Um, the dedication says for e for anyone who has struggled to find their voice and I think it's a lot of people under us A lot of people are struggling to find their voice and I think that's a really nice dedication. Thank you, Eric I think this is gonna be a really interesting read. It might be one of those books that you You have to read like at a particular time like for instance um the Sister of a Hood of Blood is a book, like I said, I can just read it by the pool and save for the other two, but this one I think is more like a lazy Sunday afternoon read with a big cup of tea or maybe even a glass of wine like if I can actually afford a glass of wine here in Dubai. But yeah, I think this is an amazing book and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy um, to have received it. I'm really happy I said a yes to Eric when he reached out to me. So yeah, I'm looking forward to cracking this book. I didn't notice this. Oh my God, look at that. That is so pretty. Thank you for reading. If you enjoyed the book, please leave a review on Goods Result or Amazon. Authors, take note. This is an amazing note to just put with, with your book. It doesn't cost a lot, but I think it will literally like help you get so many Amazon and Goodreads reviews just by reminding people with this amazing little paper that you can just use as a bookmark. That's the word, bookmarks! You can use it as a bookmark, so, so a lot of people I think will use it as a bookmark, but it will remind them to always leave a review, so yeah, it's, it's a really great way of, um, of collecting reviews on Goodreads and Amazon. Great job, Eric. Okay, I've got three books left. I'm gonna start with the small one in the white package. I've been wanting to open this from, like, I picked it up yesterday <laughs> when I was going to the shop and I've been wanting to open it since yesterday. Um, I like, I tried to peek, like, there's like a little opening, I tried to peek in it because I don't know who's gonna send me, like, a, it's like a smaller book. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to opening this one because I've been waiting almost 24 hours to open it. The other ones I've been waiting longer, but <laughs> this one really piqued my interest. Oh, and I can't open it. <gasps> Nothing in there. Oh my God. The Wonderful Whippet of Winifred Weatherworks. <laughs> my head just like melted by the, by the name of the book alone. Oh, Philippa Stasiuk. 
Bless you. Ah, sorry, Philip. I'm I'm 100% pronouncing your name wrong. Um, but I'm, 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 I'll just call you Philippa like I just did with Eric um, because me and pronouncing stuff is a bit hard because obviously English um, to start with is not my native language um, so there will always be a bit of a, a mixture between maybe like English and French and, and Dutch so I'm so sorry <laughs> um, so the wonderful whippet of Winifred Weatherwax Look at this gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous cover. <gasps> oh my god. I'm just gonna zoom in on the little woman chasing that the dog. It's amazing. I I love the drawing. Oh and then the, the dog looking he's like he's a bit smug. <laughs> it's an amazing drawing. It's really <gasps> and there is a bookmark as well. Ah oh. oh. Uh, I'm almost like scared to read the blurb because I am so enamored with the cover and, and actually with, the, with the, the typesetting of the book as well. I'm just going to show you. Look how beautiful the, the titles are. Like look at the font. It's amazing. It's got goosebumps. I really do. I really do. That's how much I love this cover. Winifred Weatherwax begins summer with a pedigreed puppy. A whippet named Shumba with best in show written in his stars. But when Shumba starts winning, other hounds start disappearing. As more dogs vanish, Freddy and the new friend Eli team up to investigate a mystery that includes this honest dog breeding, the colourful world of dog shows, a first crush, a nefarious villain and chicanery. And chicanery? Look, that is where my, me not being... English but rather Flemish or Belgian or Dutch speaker um, is, is inhibiting me because I don't know how to pronounce that word, word sorry, word, sorry. <laughs> chicanery more sinister than common dog theft okay so let's do that again um, as more dogs vanish Freddy and a new friend Eli Team up to investigate a mystery that includes this honest dog breeding, the colourful world of dog shows, a first crush, a nefarious villain and chicanery more sinister than common dog theft. On a way, Winifred discovers a magical bond between humans and dogs. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I, I can't say anything more. Words are just taken out of my mouth because I just want to stop this movie now and just start reading. So as you all know, I I love um, fantasy. I love a bit of science fiction. I love young adult. I love adventure. I love historical novels. But like, I'm a real sucker, like a real sucker for um, cozy and cozy detectives and cozy romance and whatever not. And I think it's just like, a cozy detective romance with dogs and you know you guys know dogs make everything better one one of the one of the reasons why i'm i'm a bit disappointed i guess that we live in dubai is because because first of all it's a muslim country and muslims and dogs are not best friends well dogs are best friends but muslims don't really like dogs because they consider them to be a dirty animal um and obviously Dubai is very warm, so it can be 45 degrees outside. And I think it's very, it's, it's reasonably um, bad for your dog to be outside at 45 degrees. I see um, one or two dog owners um, letting their dog out um, at like 6 a.m. in the morning or like 11 p.m. at night during summer. And I think that's really sad for the dog. I'm, I'm not like, if you live in Dubai and you have a dog, I'm, I'm not looking at you to say, um, oh, you're, you're bad. I'm just trying to say that not many people in Dubai have a dog. Um, so where in the UK, I would just see dogs every single day and stop and pat them and just talk to people about dogs. I can't really do that here, which is quite sad. And I'm really looking forward to I don't know, maybe in a few years moving to a country where there are loads of dogs. So yeah, my, my, my dog addiction I, I used to have in Belgium and in the UK 
it's have, gonna have to be substituted um, by this beautiful book and I'm really looking forward to reading this book um, and I'm really looking forward to reading this book so yeah I'm, uh, I'm gonna acquaint myself with this wonderful whippet really really soon okay so next up is a really big sturdy book That was hard to open. Ooh, a very sci-fi cover. The preferred observer. I think I would like have liked the cover to have like, I don't know, maybe maybe this, not in um, in black, and maybe the lettering not in well, what looks like word art. But I do like the comp but I do like the composition of the glasses and the lightning strike and you can see here a few um, airships. So yeah, I think it's a really interesting cover. Let's have a look on the inside. Matthew Bruce Alexander. Okay, Matthew. So it's it's quite a substantial book, um, 565 pages. So you really get a lot of uh, a lot of book for your money. Let's have a look at the blurb. The last great war ravaged the earth, but what followed killed even more, the rogue. Governments across the world are desperate to stop the plague, brought to earth from Martian mi microbes. But in an effort to save mankind, how far is too far? A motley group of people get swept up by events. Their paths cross and recross and their actions affect others in ways they could never have foreseen. A man who should not be in the present, an orphan girl without a home, an android who begins to think independently, a psychiatric patient who was once an insider, a woman who was who some, a woman who somehow survived the rogue, an honorable hitman and an escort with access to sensitive secrets all have a role to play. But when they get a glimpse of the truth, it may be more than they are willing to accept. This sounds amazing. Like I said, I have been um, watching a lot of Star Trek and I think this is like right up the alley, just like bring back, bring together a motley crew of people all with their own strengths and weaknesses and then have an adventure and have the adventure play out and maybe the adventure is bigger than all of them. So yeah, I think this is a story I will really like. Um, it's a really nice book. It's really nicely published. So if you're interested in this book, I would definitely buy the paperback just because it is a really nicely published book. Okay, I'm already at the last package. Before I open this package, I would love to ask you to please subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up, a like because it really makes me happy and it motivates me to make more videos. I also have a website that I will obviously link in the description. Please follow me on Instagram, it's really fun on my Instagram. I post pictures of the books that I receive and read and review and I've got a whole bunch of readers up there, about 22,000 at the moment and I would love for you to join me on Instagram and on YouTube and on my website who knows thank you anyway for um, maybe subscribing and liking the post and subscribing on Instagram and you know you know what I mean anyway last package um, I remember that this package so I went to the shop yesterday and um, when I go to the shop, I just pick up my mail as well because it's like in the vicinity. And I just remember that I had to like carry this one in my hand, with like massive bags of groceries just because it didn't fit in my backpack anymore. So yeah, let's open this bag, bad boy, after I've, um, I've had to basically walk it home. Okay, not an easy one to open. Hmm. Oh 
Okay. I know what this is. Oh, Katie Christine. I have been looking forward to these books so much. Katie Christine reached out to me over email and I was a bit like, oh, uh, I don't know, maybe is it as a children's book? Is this a young adult book? What is this? But then she included a video. And I think if, you, if you're an author, videos are, are an amazing way to market your book because with the Sisterhood of Blood as well, it was especially the video that made me wanna really start reading the book. And same for these two. So I've been expecting those, looking forward to these books just because of the video. And if I read the, the blurb or saw the cover, I would have been like, okay, yeah, I'll just put it on my reading list. But because of the video, these are just like priority together with this one. They're just priority just because the video was so well made, it was so beautiful, it was really enticing. It was amazing, like literally amazing. So yeah, um, Katie Christine has written books about the, in, the impeccable Petunia and believe it or not, Petunia is a chicken. <laughs> um, I love the covers. So the covers are by Jonathan Edward. And, and they're amazing. Um, I, 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 it's a kind of artwork that if I have a forever country and a forever home, I would love to hang in my um, in my home. I, I, I love these. It's it's my style. I wish I could make this. So it's about a chicken, and you'd be like, huh? A book about a chicken? What the hell? But actually, once I finished viewing the video, and I will play about five seconds now. video I went back to the blurb and then you know it really spoke to me so <laughs> I finally have them relegated to a life without hope for anything more than a squalid existence at the bottom of the pecking order <laughs> Petunia a backyard chicken lives out her days in a flock where gossip flows as currency where malice at its heart and boredom by his side Petunia's plight seems insurmountable until a strange woman's tears hurl her throughout a labyrinth that she never anticipated and into a friendship she might not survive. Oh! Okay, so yeah, I've already read that, but I think it's a, it's a really interesting one because I think that maybe, maybe um, Petunia will become friends with like I don't know, the woman of the house or, or like the woman of the farm or something. Like with Peter Rabbit where the woman is weirdly friends with the rabbits. But then in a weird chicken run version where, you know, the chickens are just chickens and not chickens for chicken pie. If you get what I mean. No, yeah, me neither. Anyway, I think this is amazing. Husband and wife team Jonathan Edward and Katie Christine make their home in Seattle, Washington. 
They enjoy walking their shelty Niles and awaken every morning with hungry cats, Frankenstein and Penelope, perched on their faces. <laughs> I love the writing style already, like it's, it's a way of, um, you know, saying a lot without saying too much. Where she, for instance, was like, you know, um, where gossip flows as currency, with manners at its heart and boredom by its side. It infers a lot, it's, it's amazing. And then with the, the hungry cats, Frankenstein and Penelope perched on their faces, it's, you know, you can, you can, you can just imagine the cat sitting there and that's, that's, that's how cat, cats are. I don't like cats all that much, but I know that cats react that way. No, I'm lying. I do like cats. I like cats that act like dogs. I've got a friend who has this amazing cat. I will show you a picture. And Charlie, literally, he acts like a dog. He follows you around, he sits on your lap, he likes strokies, he loves snacks, and Charlie, the boss -like cat, is a dog. Not a cat. Anyway, um, Katie and Jonathan have a shared love of books, movies, and tending to their ever-growing garden. That is so nice. Oh, they sound like the perfect couple. That is really nice. Um, like I said, Jonathan, I love your drawings, they're amazing. If I ever have a forever country and a forever home, I probably contact you um, for some drawings because I love these, but that might just take like another 15, 20 years, probably. Okay, so book number two. As the two tales opens, the flock confronts a spiral of death and disappearance. Ensnared by a rapacious raccoon and desperate for a way out, Petunia must throw herself at the mercy of the dark open road with little more than gumption, a pair of useless wings, and a dubious companion as her guide. That's the kind of adventure that I'm looking for. It's like chicken run, but what happened after? Uh, so yeah, I think that's really, really amazing. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading these books. Oh, and the drawings in the books are really nice as well. Look at this. Oh, look at how beautiful. Oh, I'm literally fawning over chickens. Can you imagine? They're really nice. Oh guys, if you, if you want this book, buy the paperback. Literally, they're so nice. Sorry, I'm just so in awe of these books. They're absolutely beautiful. They're really nice. Uh, thank you, Katie and Jonathan. This is absolutely amazing and I'm really looking forward to reading your books. <sighs> anyway, guys, I will be making another one of these videos next month in uh, at the beginning of March. I'm really looking forward to seeing what I will have in my P.O. Box then. So I hope to see you again next month for another P.O. Box opening and obviously on my other videos, which I will be uploading soon. I will be talking about book covers and why book covers are incredibly important. I will be talking about bloggers, the importance of bloggers, and I will be talking about vanity publishers and why you might want to stay out of the way of vanity publishers. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.